after salvation which is probably the number one spiritual essential of everybody's life i consider it to be the greatest miracle god can do for you everybody i saw lazarus raised from the dead but he died again i saw jesus raise people from the dead they died When you go to funeral and you see people lie in state and you are crying, what really are you crying about? Is it a dead? Because it's appointed for a man to die once. Even when God came to the earth, he spent 33 years and existed. I don't think people cry if they understand it because of the body lying down. But the question is, where are they going? Because death is not the end of life. Life continues after death. One of the greatest mysteries you understand is that death does not end life. Death is a transition. It doesn't end. Whether you believe in Christ or not, life will continue after death. So the greatest miracle God can do for anybody is to not make you a member of a church. To me, the saddest thing that will ever happen to people is to stay in church for years and never be in Christ. Very committed. There are more religious Christians than spiritual Christians. Hear me very carefully. So that's the greatest miracle when God gets you born again under the power of the Holy Spirit, transform and regenerate your spirit, man. You are a new creature. You are born again. Your name is written in the book of life. No miracle can be compared to that. Nothing can be compared to that. You are born again. You have your name written in the book of life. You have hope for the life to come. You have hope for eternal life. Jesus, everybody walking on them born again is assured of the next life. How do I know I'm going to hell? Now, if you die, and if you like die now and see what I'm talking about. If you die, according to the books I've read over the years, and you see you are going down. Kenneth Hagin said, before he was born again, when you read the book on vision, he died three times because he was paralyzed. He was, he was on the bed of affliction. He was sick. And then he died. At that time, he was not born again. He said, when I died, I went down. Even the book is, I went to hell. And he was going down. But when you died in Christ, you start going up. All of them, all the books I've read about people who experienced death and they came back. Hey! So the moment you see that your bedroom ground is open. Uh, you better pray that you come back to life. So that is the first miracle God can do for me. He changes your life. And after that, probably the second one is when you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. These are all the spiritual empowerment for you to live your life i was doing a study about the weapons that humiliate sickness and god gave me about seven of them if you practice this one sickness will be far away from you and even if it has come you can eliminate it so you become born again you are filled with the holy ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues as the spirit give you utterance after that what next now isn't it interesting that number one much as god wants us to come to heaven it's not in hurry for us to come. If God is in hurry for us to come to heaven, then the day you become born again, you must die. But we live in a world. I thought about something. We live in a world. So after you become born again, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. There is a way you can live your life that you might not even continue in Christ. Apart from salvation, Holy Ghost baptism, the next virtue in life you need and let nobody close your spirit. If you mix that ingredient in your life, eh, your life will go in a way you yourself don't like it. When you become born again, you are filled with the Holy Ghost. The next thing your heart must pursue and desire to get is wisdom. I want to tell you something of wisdom, whether you are a pastor, whether you are an entrepreneur, whether you are a father, whether you are a mother, every in life is a wisdom problem every problem a 
mystery problem in life. You are not living at peace with your wife. It's not your wife is stopping. It's a wisdom problem. You are not, you are, you, you are not passing your exam. It's a wisdom problem. You are not getting finances. It's a wisdom problem. Wow. Every problem in life is a wisdom problem. Now, I'm not going to talk to you about the kind of wisdom you know. Now, the reason I'm preaching the wisdom is that wisdom, when you don't have it, God show us how to get it. Just to disappoint you a little bit. You don't get it from schools. You are not wise because you are PhD. No. Having higher education does not necessarily make you a wise person. Wisdom is a spirit. So if it's a spirit, the only God can give it up. It's a good place to clap for Jesus Christ. Somebody say wisdom. James chapter 1 verse 5. James talks about the fact that if any of you lack wisdom, if any of you lack wisdom, if anybody in church this morning lack wisdom, let that person ask of God. Don't ask it from your lecturer. Oh, I'm already preaching. Don't ask it from the school you attended. You can go to Oxford and be a fool. You can go to Legon, complete your PhD and be a fool. Knowledge does not necessarily, to be knowledgeable does not necessarily mean you are wise. No, on what ground are you talking about? I have seen professor lecturers who want to sleep with girls of their age before they give them pass mark. That is a learned man, that is a fool. Some of you that are in a church and you have beautiful wives in a house and then you are still having girlfriends in office. It's because of foolishness. This is important. That's all. If you go deep, deep, wisdom solves all the problems. The spirit of wisdom. You know what you can bring. You know what you can attract. No. Saul was looking for David to kill him. The, the, the president on the whole army, the Bible says he behaved himself wisely and escaped death. Wisdom. The Bible says shall be the stability of our time. James said that if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. But let me, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you something because some of you, there are all kinds of wisdom you believe in. Thank God you believe in that. But I'm going to show different kinds of wisdom. There's a wisdom you believe in. It will not save you. James chapter 3 verse 14. There's a wisdom you believe in. It will take you nowhere. I want to show you something. James chapter 3 verse number 14. Let's talk about wisdom. Nobody right. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. So watch this. Stay there. Stay there a little while. You can have bitter envy. It means that you are envious. You see people wear dry, nice dresses in church. You are angry. Strive. Open to quiet. You like fighting. Every group you go, you take problem. And then we ask you, the middle son of a tear. Your husband talk, you talk and say, me the son of a tear. People me who so son of a tear. Me a kusha jemfua. Obe timi ni semfu na kubebi abeme fa ma me so me obi ni msa sana me tia. You are just a fool. I'm going to show you why. Because the Bible says if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, the most dangerous person around you is anybody that says sana me tia. No room for change. No room for growth. If you should start as a baby, there is a place you must become a child, and there is a place you must become a son. And a daughter. We stop. Now watch it. If you are bitter and envy and strife in your heart, glory not. Glory, don't, don't, don't boast about it. Don't boast about it. Me not KKK. Me not deform. So I can tell me and nobody will say yes. No. No. It's not every battle you fight. Wise people avoid battles. I'm going to give you power code. Ha, ha, ha. Also, for the right course never guarantees victory. It is the right strategy. The right course never guarantees victory. It is the right strategy that guarantees victory. He said that if you have bitter envy in your heart, don't glory not. Lie not against the truth. Keep going down. Go down. Let's see what say. This wisdom. So, somebody who is bitter, somebody who is angry, somebody say, eh, me the son of a tear, it's a kind of wisdom. He has concluded that he is smart in those places. He can gossip about people until they get into trouble. The Bible said that this wisdom descended not from above. So the, this, the wisdom I'm preaching to you today, it must descend from somewhere. Ooh, 
if it has not descended and it's still there and if you're still there then you are in the disadvantage it is no beauty that establish a matrimonial home is wisdom oh my it is no money that build a house i will show you in a second that by wisdom a house is built i can tell you listen i can tell you i can tell you there are some women here they don't have money in a struggle vacant they live in a small probably two-bedroom house they probably don't have a car they take uber and trotro god is developing them to start it but if you go they have stable homes yeah. listen don't clap don't clap don't clap they are stable they are enjoying soundness they are enjoying peace of mind they are stable you come to their home as if the devil does not exist wisdom is not making them understand what is called each each is in marriage what has established the home is no money if money make marriage work bill Gates' wife will not leave him and what else are you looking for check the billionaire go to hollywood go to those places see the way they are so don't just think that when you make money all your problems will solve no the most dangerous person to put the money in his hand the most dangerous person to receive money is a fool Because money is a type of God. When it comes to the hands of a fool, he abuse it. Wisdom, this wisdom descended not from above, but it's actually. So there are wisdom, you know, it's actually. It's actually wisdom. No. When you come to protest it, everything you see here is supernatural wisdom. What the politician trying to build is actually wisdom. This wisdom descend not from above. If in heaven there are elders, That's right. the omnipotent God has surrounded him with other wisdoms. Twenty-four elders around God. Elders who give counsel to our leaders. Look at somebody say, "You need wisdom. You need wisdom." This wisdom descends not from above. It is actually it is sensual. Now look at the three kinds of wisdom you see here. There is a wisdom that is what actually asasisu nyansa. There was wisdom that is sensual. Open ma. Now the way I was saying, man, I also in and said, but we are gym for because it's sensual wisdom. It's sensual wisdom. Now ten years, what did me and manage three boyfriends? Ah, huh? somebody's husband, the one that work in a, at the embassy, and the one that you think that you will collect money from this one and marry this one. It's a sensual wisdom. You are smart, but smart in foolishness. Because at the end of that day, that smartness will kill you. Sensual. You are addicted to all kinds of things on the screen. Some of you don't have discipline. The fact that Facebook is free, YouTube is free, everything is free, that's no means you should steal your time. The greatest commodity you have on earth is your time. Time. What makes examination difficult is the time. Sometimes you can answer the question by the time limit. So you don't have time. God gave her 24 hours. How you manage it? Tell me what comes to your pocket. Now listen. Let me say it again. Use your head so that you can be ahead. Use your head so you can be ahead. And wisdom can... Oh my, I feel like preaching this thing. Foolish decisions and destroy your life. Some people, God was testing. They make small money. They started changing women. Started thinking as if there's a problem with the church. And they start. I don't care what you think about the church. Oh, forget it. Right? The church is not a comfortable place. Oh. Don't come here and think that you are coming to live it. Hey, I don't know why it's a church and I let my money somebody steal it. Hey, the person sitting by you, he's a thief. Why he's in the church? He's in the church. Let me give you the prototype. The church is at the ark of Noah. Hey, it's not a comfortable place. The lion, the bear, the ekura, the the, the jiramoa. Have you ever had a cat and you poo poo in the bedroom? Yes. My goodness. Listen to wisdom because wisdom is too high for the fool. If the spirit of wisdom enters you this morning, it will solve 99% of your problems. 
Those who are clapping, God will give you wisdom. Wisdom! Wisdom! The fact that you have the phone that through me you spend six hours flipping. Flipping the phone. Wasting quality time. Wasting quality time. Watching all kinds. Those who make news, don't listen to news. They are busy making news. You are the listener. When you go to stadium, <laughs> there are spectators and there are participators. The participators are the 22 players on the floor. The spectators are those who have come to pay money. All the money they pay. You see the crowd in the stadium, the money is for those 22 guys. 22 boys 11, chasing a leather with air. That wisdom you are talking about is actually sensual and devilish. Devilish wisdom. That is what is trying to tell people that even though you are a male, say you are a female. Hey. Devilish. Devilish wisdom wants you to enter exit when there is a oh 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 somebody understand what I'm talking about. God created that there are access to your house. Nobody go to their bedroom through the window. Think about it. Think about it. The window is there for you to throw things out. You throw water. You throw that. There are parts of your body, there are windows. Some of them are doors. No, are you getting it? Yes, sir. This guy he doesn't have a door, he has a window. Yeah. And his window is the old type. This one God created there with a door. Don't enter a window. And you are just disturbing yourself for nothing. You will die for free. You will die for free. Because you cannot. That, that wisdom is earthly. It is sensual. It is devilish. So the devil has managed to concord his own wisdom. And they are walking around with a little money. So they say, these people, they have money. Who told you money answers all problems? Who told you money solves all problems? Goes to... Some of the richest people have the, the richest problems. <laughs> That's it. Their problem is so rich, you can't even solve it. I'm telling you, some of the richest people, they have complicated problems. All they can solve is the money. They can't even eat the money they are making. So they, they don't eat any food. They are on liquids. You have to be glad that we take care of we do go to Ghana. Some of you will be here. But try to say, I'll meet them in Wisdom. This wisdom is said, don't follow earthly wisdom. Don't follow sensual wisdom. You are discharging the spermatosia by masturbation, by all kinds of stupid things. By the time you get ready for children, you have destroyed. You don't have wisdom. Wisdom. Most times we blame the woman, but sometimes the problem is with the man. That's Africa. We will even find out what the problem is. Oh, what are you talking about? That a boy impregnated you, he continues school, you defer. What just a fool, parent. Can't do the right thing at the right time. No, at your age, you have no business with sex. Even those who are married because of school fees, they are careful. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yes, you are just foolishly walking around. Yeah, people are careful. People are careful. I mean, no. Some of you touch your husband, they didn't mind you because the last school fees is not paid. And all you come in, all you, it is easy for a woman to come and say, I am pregnant. They will say it and just go, I'm pregnant. It doesn't end there. When you hear, I am pregnant, your responsibility and your finances must boost up. Additional life. If you don't know wisdom, you would think that, no. Oh, you just walk around without thinking, you are not wise. When your wife comes and says, somebody's wife was delivering. She, they ask him from a dentist, they say, I say, what were we are at the moment, three about more about the man, the man collapsed. He collapsed completely. She couldn't wake up. They have to re resuscitate the man. You can hear one statement and collapse. At the moment, how many? They say three, but more are coming. Oh, Travis said, Kum. He was driving. They saw him going zigzag like they stopped him. 
this so good so Receive grace for divine wisdom. Go to the next verse and let me show you where envy and strive there's confusion and every evil work. Keep going. Let me show you them something. But the wisdom that is from above, look at it. The wisdom that is from above is first pure. So if you don't live a pure life, you are not wise. So the first thing, anybody in church who is not contaminating themselves, they are living a pure life. You are trying to tell them, I'll marry you, they agree. You are trying to have sex with them and say, please, I'm not one of those people. I, I, don't, I don't go that side. No, I don't. I, the last thing I want to do is for me to give you my nakedness before you marry me. I can't forgive myself. Please, 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 please. I'm pursuing holiness. I'm not interested in this thing. If this is a reason you will not marry me, then I don't think you are my husband. This is the principle. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable. So people that create confusion, they are not wise. Peaceable. So if you see people that love peace, blessed are the peacemakers, they will inherit the kingdom. Peace, peace. It's a virtue. It's a gift of the spirit. Open to the door. Open to No. You like fighting. You like confusion. You like strife. Where there's strife, there's confusion and every evil work. No. A strife person would disintegrate a united family. Peaceable, that wisdom is gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruit, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Look at the virtue. So when they say somebody is wise, he carry all this virtue. Oh. Don't walk around thinking that, that wisdom, the wisdom that is from above. So when God gives you wisdom, that is why, listen, that is why I wrote a statement here. Wisdom huh, is not genetic. Your father being wise does not necessarily mean that you'll be wise. It's not genetic. God told me something three days ago. I was standing there and I was thinking about something. I was thinking about every father wants to leave inheritance for his children. It's in the Bible. A good man leaves inheritance for his children, children. And I was there. And I was talking about, oh, I was beginning to think about some things for my children. I said, that's not a problem. I got to pray, I went back and pray. They say, don't only leave a future for them. Don't only prepare a future for them. Prepare them for the future. And he said, the worst thing you can do for your children is to leave a future for them without preparing them for the future. Because we are raising children that sometimes they think that they are entitled for what they have. They don't know the price. They don't know the sacrifice. Because people left empire for their children. They scattered the empire. They were not prepared. Wisdom. Wisdom. It's not genetic. It doesn't get transferred from automatically from a father to a son. The son must consciously desire to walk in wisdom. Number two, it's not permanent. You can have it yesterday and drop it today. So there must be a continuous conscious desire to walk in wisdom. It's not permanent. It solves every problem. When wisdom walks to a place of confusion, you will stabilize the place. How do I know it's not permanent? Solomon had it. He died as a fetish priest. Let us look at the way. Okay? How you can curse God's blessing on your life. You can open your mouth and curse the blessing God gave you as a result of your attitude. Your wrong disposition and your way of looking at things. Solomon has God wisdom. If God decides to give him that wisdom, he will be the most wisest man but the most poor man. She will be the wisest man that is broke. Later he even wrote a parable in the book of Ecclesiastes, that a poor wise man, he used his wisdom to save a city, yet no man remembered him. The Solomon said that wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, a poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard. So when he asked for wisdom, God said, I will add riches. He didn't ask that one. God gave the riches. God is the one that added the riches. Now, listen to me. At the end of his life, he said the riches are vanity. God cannot give you something that is a vanity. It's your attitude that make it vanity. 
If you are not wise and you don't continue in wisdom, you will cast the blessings of God on your life. You were so wise, you were so prosperous that wealthy, mighty people on earth were traveling like the Queen of Sheba. So when I enter, that woman was a powerful woman. Wow. Wow. Enter into Solomon's place. My spirit has left me. Half of the story has not been told. I don't need to listen to you. The things around you speaks of who you are. Every, when I enter your house, it's a product of your wisdom. Everything you build is a product of your wisdom. The way your room is designed is a product of your wisdom. The way your house is designed is a product of your wisdom. If you are living in a house that has not been painted for six years, it's a product of what is inside you. This is a bottom line. I know you won't clap because that is your portion. That is it. No. 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 If your bedsheet has not been washed for three months, as a young lady, and you are still looking for a husband. No. Do you know some of you on the wake up, you don't even dress bad? You don't. No, you don't dress your bed. You don't. You don't dress your bed. You are not building wisdom. Some of you want to marry. When we call for young girls to come, you come. The problem is not a prayer. If God decides to answer the prayer, are you prepared? Because marriage is not just because you pray, you are wearing a ring. It comes with responsibility. If you go and marry a boy who was never trained to cook, he doesn't know how to do anything. Your responsibility will double up. Are you prepared for that thing? Wisdom produces it. Oh, some of you, you said you want to marry, but you don't know how to cook. No, so are you ready to prepare for marriage? They can't fly egg. There will be a segregation of the salt. One side will be salty. Another side will have no salt. They can't do it. No. No, I know you can prepare soup, but we can't drink it. We are not talking about prepare. You can prepare the soup, but after you finish, we cannot drink it. If you drink it, it's a suicide mission. But you come to the altar that you want to pray. No. Most of them, they say they want to buy us off. I'm telling you, they don't have suspense. They don't have plate. They don't have anything. If you go to their home today, they will take you on a restaurant. They cannot cook and serve. When we're growing up, the guests in the fellowship, when you visit their home, they go to the kitchen, they cook. They will prepare chifaba fro and then rice and serve you quickly. These are microwave foods. You cook it very quickly. You cannot cook. But you think, it means that you are prayerful, but you are not wise. You don't have. You have. Uh, hey, listen. You can never get to a future you have not prepared for. Then you can't walk into a future you have not prepared for. You must prepare mentally. You must be prepared mentally. You must be prepared emotionally. You must be prepared psychologically. And that is wisdom. No. Immediately you finish and say, "I declare you husband and wife." It doesn't end. There. It's the beginning of wahala. Your sleeping times are going to change. You were sleeping alone. You can sleep any time and wake up any time. You never prepare. Midnight, we sleep 10 o'clock. We see Obisa and Amosa or what? <laughs> Ask them married people. Ask them. They will tell you. Ask them. Now, Agatha, if you have not prepared psychologically, emotionally for it, you will create a fight and a tension because you don't even know the psychology of a man. You don't know what happens to a man when he's ready to fire and you resist. <laughs> It can bring things away. It's so strong that Bible says, don't deny them. Don't deny them. But this one has nothing to do. Come to the altar, we'll pray for you. How many of you want to marry? You are praying, you are, you are trusting God for a future partner. You come and lie there like a, a, a chunk of body. You can even sleep at the altar. Ask those who are married for 30 years, 20 years, ask them. Do you know the wisdom in 30 years of marriage? Let me tell you, it means that 30 years of forgiveness. 30 years of not only forgiving but forgetting. 30 years of the wisdom of letting it go. 30 years of the wisdom of up and down. 30 years of wisdom of living with a difficult man and a difficult woman. 30 years of living with a person you expected to change, but he said, me change. Now, why? 
the day I change, may I die. I won't change because of you. 30 years of a stubborn wife, 30 years of a stubborn husband, but they never quit. Because all, sometimes you're, the stubbornness of your wife, God is using it to shape you. You humble yourself. You do, she will do things unconsciously, but she's doing it because God is manipulating it. Because he rules on the face of men. Wisdom. Tell them the truth. Don't let them feel like when they pray that is the solution. No, prayer doesn't solve everything. In fact, wisdom solves more problems than prayer. Because when you have more wisdom, you pray less. Yeah. And you get a lot of breaks. For instance, you have created tension at home. Your husband, I was ministering to a girl, he said, We are not talking. Do you know there's a prophecy I didn't give to her? I was telling her, travel to your, the mining company, kneel down and beg your husband. I was going to tell her, say, kneel down, beg. That is wisdom. You stand and pray. I am three days fasting. Lord, change his heart. Lord, I rebuke the spirit of confusion. No. Go stop the praying. Go and kneel down. And hold his and say, honey, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wisdom. No prayer point. It is nothing when it's in the natural to get to the spirit. When Satan sees, that is why the Lord Bible says, don't let the sun go down on your anger. After the sun is gone, it's going to the spirit. So before the sun is in the natural, after the sun, Satan takes over. Because your grace period is a spy. So marriages, you will step in one another souls. This one will step in another because both of you are sitting on the same chair. But wisdom is the stability of our time. The Bible says wisdom, so it stabilizes your home. Seek for wisdom, pray for wisdom, practice wisdom, walk with wise people. He that walks with the wise shall be wise. So you are a fool, but you find yourself in the company of wise people. God said, From today, you are wise. If you can tell me your friends, I will know. The gravity of your wisdom. The ascendancy of it. Isn't it sad? That as beautiful and pretty as you are, all your friends are foolish people. Surrounded by friends who, that, who are not married. You are a married woman. All your friends are not married. What counsel will you get from them? Oh! What counsel? Only Nigerians who act it like that. Thank God for their lives. I was watching something about Nigeria. Those are short, short movies somewhere. There was a girl who was giving his friend bad advice about his husband. I saw him. I saw me here. The girl told him, I'm tired of you. Walk out. It was not long. The guy was sitting in some restaurant somewhere. The other lady who let his friend came to meet the guy and started telling him, what is happening? Are you okay? He said, no. I mean, my, your friend gave me a problem. You, a man like you, somebody giving you problems. Well, we talked to her and she doesn't listen. No, a tebera. Some of you, that is the kind of friends you have. Teberas. The guy was smart enough. When the girl was trying to take advantage of her, tell somebody, video everything that is happening here. Finish, let me give you a heart. He went to show it to his girl. Your best friend. That is it. Oh. You think the man you are despising, somebody doesn't wish is his husband? Be a little wise. Walk in wisdom. A little wise. Stabilize your home. Just do what God said. You'll be free from trouble. That's it. Yeah. What God says. You'll be free from trouble. No. 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 There is a realm you come to for the sake of peace. You change. Because you don't want to leave a tension around you. Your peace is gone. For the sake of peace, you change. For the sake blessed are the peacemaker, they inherit. Peace means I have the right to fight, but no. For the sake of peace, what's them called? Postpone the battle. It's not time for fight. I am I'm waiting for answer to prayer. You will be a hindrance to the answer. So go with your trouble. Because sometimes, eh, as of your winning is decided by your wisdom. Your winning is decided by your wisdom. How you win is decided by how wise you are. Wow. Huh. You will not make foolish decisions again. 
in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Sometimes eh, wisdom is knowing who should be ignored. Wisdom is knowing the person you should ignore. It's not everybody you give them attention. Because when you give them attention, they'll give you direction. And because they don't like your direction, will be wrong. So avoid them. That's why sometimes, if you give the devil too much attention, he'll give you direction. Ignore him. Live as if he doesn't exist. Let's pick some PowerPoints of wisdom here, and then I'll be out of your way. Are you, are you here with me, or you've gone home? <laughs> no, number one. We are talking about how to get it. Wisdom can be imparted by laying on of hands. It means that, Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9, if I have the wisdom of raising things for God and I lay my hands on you, it, the power, that wisdom can be transferred. So if you meet a man of God, God is using mightily and you come in, the opportunity for him to lay hands on you. Laying out of hands in the spirit is contact and transmission. Electricity, life for you can never shock you until you come in contact with it. So when you touch the life for you, or you put a pin in the socket, it will shock you because you have come in contact. As long as you are not in contact, power does not transfer. So when a man of God lays his hands on you, it is something God has put on them. It doesn't belong to them. Everything on me as an anointing, God put it there. Now when you come by faith, that wisdom can be transferred. So the wisdom, the way we preach, we don't prepare the message. It comes because it's a gift. It's a gift of wisdom from God. It just flows up. When we lay hands, things happen. When we move, things happen. That wisdom. So Joshua, the son of Nun, was a military man, eh? was full of the spirit of what? Wisdom. Where did he get the wisdom from? Because, for because Moses has what? Lay his hands upon him. So Moses was full of wisdom. Joshua didn't have it. Moses lay his hands on Joshua and the spirit of wisdom was transferred. Now, if that is so, be careful the way a fool lay hands on you. I don't understand what you just said. What who is a fool? Yes. If a pastor is married and consuming the girls in the church, having an affair with them, he is full of the spirit of foolishness. He is destroying the people that is going to account for their lives. Yes. And so when he lay hands on you, she will transfer something different from wisdom. A man of God was trying to complete an auditorium. He started, yes, it's difficult. He was praying, the Lord said that. You don't need to pray. Go and let Prophet Nana lay hands on you. She carried the grace for it. She came, he said, senior minister, I might pray for him. She moved back. The anointing came upon him. In two to three weeks, he completed the church. Amen. Now, what did he contact? He came to receive impartation of the spirit of wisdom to build. So, wisdom can be transferred by laying on of hands. I say it can be transferred. Amen. So, you come to all night anointing service. We are laying hands on you. We are transferring wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, after you have gotten the wisdom, symptoms of a man that works in wisdom, number one. If somebody works in wisdom, that person welcomes correction. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 11 to 12. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 9, 3 verse 11 to 12. If somebody has wisdom, the same thing. So, listen. If any of you do something, I call you and I rebuke you and you start working. What is it? Excuse me. You can't be talking to me like that. It's a demonstration of foolishness. The cardinal sign of a fool is that he hates advice. Listen to God's word. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Neither be wary of his correction. Oh, what will happen there? What will happen? For whom the Lord loves, he does what? He corrected. And, and, and even as a father, the son, in whom he delight. Come back to verse number 11. Give me the New Living Translation. Oh, so if i rebuke you and you are not offended it's a sign that wisdom seed is in you my child don't reject the lord's discipline and don't be upset when he corrects you and sometimes the only way god corrects you is to use his servants because god cannot correct you direct from heaven god will use somebody to correct you the person is doing for instance today god is speaking to you but he's speaking it through me 
It's simple. I will give you pastors that will feed you. For the Lord correct those he loves. Just a father corrects the child whom he delights. Are you with me? Are you there? Huh? Oh, you can't see what I'm talking about. Proverbs chapter 9 verse 8. Give it to me. Proverbs chapter number 9. And verse number 8 to 9. Let's read it. So don't bother correcting mockers. They will only hate you. Oh. Come to the King James Version first. Reprove not a scorner. Lest he hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Oh. 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 Last week, I was digesting of the word, submit to your own husband. I wanted to go deeper a little bit. Go deep calling for the deep. And I was trying to find out from my study, why should a woman submit to a man? And the Lord said, no more because... The reason you have to submit to me is that that is your head. And everybody needs a head to stay in safety. Mm. That means that you must be the kind of woman that your husband should be able to tell you what is good and what is bad. There are several times mommy has taken a dress to wear. She will even come to me and say, boy, what do you think about this dress? Is it okay? I say, no, it's fine. Sometimes he say, uh, so I said, no, no, I, I'm telling you, it's fine. She wear it on my approval. If you hear hello. Now, when you stop submitting a, to a man, he stop correcting you. Mm. It's more spiritual. When he stop correcting you, you are your own boss. Yeah. I don't want to go to that side. I'm talking about wisdom. All oh, this thing is part of wisdom. God, the only wise God said, when you marry a man, submit to him because the head of the woman is the man. The man, you must understand the characteristic of the headship God is talking about. It's not being a boss, but rather leading leadership by example. Because hear this, you can be a boss, but you are not a head. We will talk about that another time. This is wisdom. Having a position of authority does not necessarily demonstrate wisdom and leadership qualities. God called all of us as children. He saved us as children, but he called us as servants. Hear that again. God saved us as children, but he called us as servants. So when I was not a pastor, I was a child of God. Now I'm a servant of God. Hear this. You can be a boss and not a head. The head of the woman is the man. He didn't say the boss of the woman. So you must go in and find out what are the characteristics of a head and a boss. The reason you use the word head is that all the five senses are here. This is the only thing that cannot be replaced in your body. Hand can be replaced. Leg can be replaced. They do. Did the women increase part of their body? We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah. People deceive themselves with things. I saw a lady who has done this in a documentary in a play. Literally, the back is rotting. A pro. They say wrong surgery and whatever. A pro. Only what God made oh, can stand the test of time. Can I tell you this? God didn't make a mistake to make you the way you are. The way you are, there is an Adam version of you who like this Eve version of you. Wisdom. 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 I'm talking about what? Wisdom. Reprove not the scorner, he, lest he hate you. Rebuke the wise man and he will love you. Go to the next verse. Watch this. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man and he will increase in learning. May you be one of those people God is talking about. <laughs> This is the one I love. Wisdom make your enemies helpless against you. So when you are wise, your enemies look at you, don't exist. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6. 
for the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth come what knowledge and understanding jump to verse 12 to deliver thee from the way of the evil man from the man that speaketh forward things go to verse 16 jump to verse 16 and watch something to deliver thee from the strange woman so it's not prayer that deliver you from a strange woman it's what wisdom it's not prayer that deliver you from a strange man if you come here and you bring a wrong boy and we join you together it's because you are a fool you cannot walk with a wrong man and court with him for one year and not know that this guy is wrong you have the christian virtue you have been taught about different things if a guy is not correct you know one of the reasons to know the guy is not correct is that he, he always sleeps with you don't be quiet it's the truth <laughs> one that is taking advantage of you that is not married to you you have to know that you don't have a future now let me tell you why we don't have a future dr morris a of blessed memory said all lines are parallel do not paralyze those lines travel they will never cross the path is that correct huh paralyzed so they move in a certain angle they go like this he said all lies are parallel you don't understand that all truths are parallel that means that anybody that can commit a fornication can commit adultery explain it theologically it means that if you are not married and you are in the church singing in the choir and you cannot put your body under subjection and come under the virtue of self-control and stay for that year until you marry before having sex after you marry those spirits will come back and for your information marriage is not a cure for lust it complicated Men who are lustful before marriage become more lustful after marriage. Simple. So, the reason is that if you are, if you can do that and you don't control yourself, so to with that, a man that is forcing you into sex, I'm telling you, the reason why you are giving to it because of your foolishness, so let me bring you wisdom. After you marry her, this is the key you must understand. She will meet girls that are beautiful than you. What is protecting me from any other woman on earth is wisdom. The fear of God. And understanding about who God is. I can only, listen, listen, listen. I have never seen God. So I can only know God based on what he has written. God said, you don't know me, but I've written something about myself. So if you want to know me, read it. So I've read the Bible to come to know God in an extent that if I start committing adultery, it has nothing to even do about my wife or my foolishness. It has to do with me terminating and eliminating my glorious future. So watch this. Sometimes it's a test. It's a test. So Mrs. Potiphar, at the end, later David write that until the word, until his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. So theologians are saying that Mrs. Potiphar was an orchestration by God himself to test Joseph because he's taking me to a place that he's going to feed people in the world. And, and desperate people can do desperate things. When a woman is hungry, ready to give, feed his family, he can do anything. So if you sleep with Mrs. Potiphar, when you are a head of household, what will happen to people who are going to become the most powerful man? You see the way they tell you. So there is a life you are leading. You think that you enjoy your life, but God is testing you. That is also men. God can never prosper them. No, he can. Do you know why God can give me money? Because you know I won't abuse it. I will not get one ten billion dollars and be chasing girls. It's not possible. It is African disease. The disease of the African man. No. Practically, I'm telling you. Let me tell you something. The most holiest people in the church are poor, poor people. Temporary until they make money. How people can be artificially holy because there's no money. Do you know it takes money to chase women? He's living in Death Traco. He's living in some Bank of Ghana quarters. You are living in Atimpoku. At you must drive. Pokuasi, you must drive. Oba <laughs> Oh. I got a bit to be driving Kukumasi Bao. Uncle <laughs> 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 
Because on the yawn yadua. Hey, Mama, 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 the wisest man on earth outside Christ. Women make her to become a fool. Solomon became a fetish priest. The man that prayed that fire came from heaven. The one that prayed that glory descended that people could enter. Women. Africa disease. Men are humble when they are poor. Men are sober when they are poor. I'm telling you, it's not with the wise. The white, white people, they do need to be born again to lead a holy life. And a faithful life. Some of them are extreme. But you can meet a white man who are never going to church. But he has married for 60 years and it's possible it's only his wife. Ah! As I'm telling you, I'm not going to say anything. But I'm going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. I'm saying, I'm a friend of Mr. Martin K. I said, be a friend of Martin K. Or what? No, one is sicker. Fact is better. Exactly. What's the cock also? To shower. Hey, Rabbi, what's your yard? Sorry, you know. What's your yard? Sir. Oh, dying Kawatia. So, what kind? No, what kind? And come, Namisha. On cancer, you are my son. Come. You be but you are dying. You just can't bond with your kaji. Now, who offers her? I wonder who. And you are my home, Mammy. Ah. Oh, you are my office, I'm going to be. Let me say no. The demonstration I just did. Even propose and cross him and cross him. Woman, sika guniboto. Wisdom. Try pursue it. Pursue wisdom. Fight for it. Wisdom. God bless you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the message. For further inquiries, contact Well Prayer Center P.O. Box GP21421 Accra or telephone plus 233-274-009933 or plus 233-242-472655. Email us on info at portercity.com or visit our website www.portercity.com. Location plot 16, Mutual Road, Prom Prom, Greater Accra, Ghana.